Hi, I'm Melinda Webster. I am a sea ice geophysicist at the University of Alaska Fairbanks in the U.S. Uh, I've been studying sea ice for the past 10 years, and each year I've been really fortunate to go into the field. This year is no exception. I'll be joining the Mosaic Expedition in June to collect and use field observations to improve spaceborne measurements of Arctic sea ice from NASA satellites. Today, I'd like to talk to you about sea ice formation and why it's important for our climate and why snow is important for the growth of sea ice. So please join me, I'm excited to have you listening in. Sea ice formation. How does an open ocean evolve into a thick, consolidated sea ice pack? Well, to understand this, we have to go back to summer. During the summer melt season, the open ocean is absorbing a lot of sunlight and warming. This excess heat needs to be removed from the ocean surface in order for it to cool off and reach the freezing point. But cooling of the surface ocean is not a straightforward process. As the very top of the ocean begins to cool, that water becomes colder and denser and sinks, and it's replaced by warmer, more buoyant water. And so there's this overturning within the surface ocean. This means that it takes a lot more time for the surface ocean to reach the freezing point of minus 1.8 degrees Celsius. Why isn't it zero degrees Celsius? That's when liquid water freezes. It's everything to do with the salt content in the ocean. Just like we scatter salt on our sidewalks and roads to melt snow and sea ice, the salt in the ocean lowers the freezing point of water. And so it has to cool even further for sea ice to form. So how long does it take for the ocean to reach minus 1.8 degrees Celsius? This really depends on the amount of heat that was accumulated in the ocean during the summer. What we've found over the past 40 years is that it's taking longer and longer for sea ice to form in the autumn season. This is because there's less sea ice during the summer period. As more ocean becomes exposed to the sunlight above, it's absorbing that sunlight and warming. This warmth, this heat in the ocean, stays with it into the autumn season when sea ice starts to form. Although it's taking longer for the Arctic Ocean to form sea ice each year, it does reach the freezing point and ice does grow every autumn and winter. It all begins with these tiny needle-like crystals called frazzle ice. Now, even though these are really small crystals, about three millimeters in length, about the size of an ant, their formation is what kickstarts the growth season of the Arctic ice pack. During frazzle ice formation, salt is expelled from the growth of ice crystals and it remains in the surrounding seawater. The addition of this extra salt in the seawater makes it heavier and denser, so it begins to sink down further and further into the ocean. And this is a really important process for our planet's ocean circulation because this allows the ocean to overturn and to convect water of different densities and it dries the ocean currents around our globe. Although most salt is expelled during sea ice formation, there is some salt that gets trapped in between ice crystals into these tiny channels and pockets. These are called brine pockets. And within these brine pockets, the salty solution remains a liquid. Why? because it is so concentrated in salt and it lowers the freezing point of that little pocket. So brine is a really special thing about sea ice. It makes sea ice an extremely unique and fascinating thing to study. It creates a habitat for microorganisms to live within the sea ice, despite the extreme cold and salt. It makes ice elastic. It makes it bendable. Um, it's not as brittle as the freshwater ice that you might find on lakes or in rivers. It also helps ice remain reflective during the melt season. So when you hear about the ice albedo feedback, salt and brine affect that. As frazzle ice crystals continue to grow and bond to one another, there are one of two pathways that sea ice formation can take in forming a thick consolidated ice cover. These two pathways really depend on what's happening with the weather. In windy conditions in rough seas, Frazzle ice crystals will start lumping together into masses and begin colliding with one another. These collisions start forming these circular disks that very much resemble pancakes. In fact, scientists call this ice pancake ice. In the opposite scenario, when there's no wind and conditions are very calm, 
Frazzle ice crystals will continue to grow and bond together to form this uniform sheet of ice crystals. And it's very, very thin. And it's so thin that it actually looks like an oil slick on top of the water. Scientists call this ice grease ice. In both cases, as the ice continues to grow and thicken and consolidate, it will form a thick sea ice cover. Once sea ice forms, it's a barrier to ocean heat escaping into the atmosphere. This helps keep the ice warmer and actually slows down its growth quite a bit. As sea ice grows thicker and thicker, it makes it more difficult for the ocean heat to transfer through the sea ice and into the atmosphere. Throughout the autumn and winter and spring, snow may fall and accumulate on the sea ice, especially as it's beginning to form. Snow acts like a gigantic blanket on the sea ice cover, keeping it warm and actually slowing its growth as well. So the timing and the amount of snow that accumulate is really important for knowing how quickly or slowly the sea ice will grow. For example, if a lot of snow accumulates on thin ice early in the autumn season, that ice will remain thin and grow very slowly because all of the heat will be trapped in the ocean. Deep snow isn't always a bad thing for sea ice. Snow is incredibly reflective, even more so than sea ice itself. So if there's a deep snowpack on the sea ice during spring, summer, and early fall, this can actually help shield the sea ice from sunlight. In some cases, the snow can be deep enough and heavy enough to depress the sea ice surface into the ocean. And when this happens, seawater can flood the snowpack and freeze. This process is called snow ice formation and is one way that sea ice can grow thicker rather quickly. As the climate continues to warm, processes that affect sea ice formation may change. Climate models do show that sea ice will continue forming in winter for many decades to come. But many questions remain on how changes in the environment are going to affect sea ice formation. For example, will sea ice grow faster as it continues to thin? How much snow will there be? And what changes will these have on ocean circulation and the temperature of the atmosphere? Through Mosaic, we'll gain a deeper understanding of how sea ice, snow, the atmosphere, and ocean are interacting with one another in a rapidly changing environment. This, in turn, will give us a much better understanding for anticipating the trajectory of our future climate.